X to Fighting has been out for a few days now. Here are my thoughts after playing it for a few days. I think it does what it set out to do. I think that it makes me feel like I'm playing one of the older Call of Duties. Now there are certain things that it isn't going to be able to make me feel, and I think that is something a lot of us are going to have to accept, that we have just gotten older. Like, in my first impressions video I was thinking about when did I start playing Call of Duty online, and it was with Call of Duty World of War in 2008. That is now 16 years ago that I began playing Call of Duty. No, they could re-release one of those Call of they could re-release Modern Warfare 2 from 2009 exactly as it was, and it just wouldn't feel the same to us now because at the end of the day we just got older. But this is as close to that feeling as I think I've gotten in a long time. Definitely more, it definitely feels more like older Call of Duty does than current Call of Duty does. The last Call of Duty that felt like Call of Duty to me anyway was the Call of Duty 4 remaster, and even that is probably pushing nearly 10 years old now. I can't put my finger on what has changed about more newer Call of Duties versus the way this feels. I think it's, I don't think it means much when you say it out loud, but the arcadiness, it feels more arcade. Call of Duty is supposed to be arcadey. When Call of Duty was in its prime when I was a teenager, the thing that we used to say all the time was like, if you wanted a realistic military style shooter, you played Battlefield, and if you wanted arcade, casual fun where you could just get on with your mates and just play a few games and you'd destroy some kids and sometimes they'd destroy you and it would just happen that way, you'd play Call of Duty. But then in recent years, Call of Duty is now a sweat fest and everybody knows that. Skill-based matchmaking pretty much just ruined the casual aspect of the game and X Defiant's whole thing about not having skill-based matchmaking is such a... It's a big thumbs up and they knew exactly what they were doing there. I think Ubisoft is trying to play for a win here because, let's be fair, Ubisoft does not pick up wins too frequently these days. And to be real with you, I think it's a good thing that a big name with a lot of money behind them, like Ubisoft, is behind this game because it means that it's unlikely to just fizzle out quite as quickly because while I'm not exactly a big multiplayer gamer anymore, for the most part I just pretty much play exclusively single-player stuff all the time, like maybe once a year I'll jump back into something that's multiplayer and again it's usually one of the older Call of Duties. But I keep up with the modern multiplayer games just through watching like Jev videos, he'll usually play whatever the latest COD killer is. And it seems like at the minute every year there's something new that comes out that is supposed to replace Call of Duty and it never does. And to be honest I don't think X Defiant is going to replace Call of Duty because I don't... I truly don't think that anything ever can. I think that the name of Call of Duty is now up there with the likes of like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, iPhone, Samsung, like things that will always just be at the top of their market because of their name recognition alone. People will always buy it just because of the name on the front of the case. People will always buy a pair of Nike shoes no matter what the Nike shoes look like because they've got the Nike tick on. Call of Duty is there now. And I've spent nearly three minutes of this video talking primarily about Call of Duty when the, the, the game we're here to talk about is X Defiant and I think that that is something that is going to plague X Defiant no matter how well it performs in that it is inherently always going to be compared to Call of Duty because the way that it's framed itself as sort of the COD replacement, the COD throwback game. And I feel bad making this comparison, but it's the same sort of comparison that like every Souls-like is ever going to have comparing them to Dark Souls. Every Souls-like that comes out, whether it wants to be compared to it or not, will be compared to Dark Souls. So here are a few things that I love about X Defiant that remind me of old school Call of Duty. First of all, the guns are real. I mean, recently in Call of Duty the guns are real, but they've not got the real names and it just doesn't feel the same to me. I like the fact that I'm running around with an M4A1 or an AK-47 or an MP5 or an MP7, an ACR. The guns feel cool, yeah? Next up, a lot of the maps feel like older Call of Duty maps. There's not too much verticality. Some of the maps have maybe one or two levels, but there isn't very many ladders, and there isn't any, from what I've encountered, openable doors. There is something inherent about an openable door in an online multiplayer game that will encourage people to camp. Now granted, back to the old Call of Duty reference, people always camped in Call of Duty, but if we're being real here, the emergence of Battle Royale games where you only have one life has encouraged entire generations of gamers at this point to be afraid of dying. To me, I've never been too bothered about how many deaths I have in an online multiplayer game, I'm more concerned about how many kills I can get. I would rather go 30 and 20 than like 20 and 3. My playstyle, and one of the reasons that I think I quite like X Defiant, is the fact that you spend the majority of the time running around, and by the look of it, so does everybody else. I've only, out of the few days that I've played, I think I've only encountered a handful of people that are playing in a way that I would describe it as Battle Royale Syndrome, where they seem afraid to move because they're afraid to die because they don't realise that they get more than one life. By the way, if you guys have watched nearly five minutes into the video and you haven't already, please do like the video and subscribe if you haven't. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. If I was to be a little bit nitpicky while we're talking about respawning and lives, 
I don't understand sometimes the amount of time you have to wait between respawns. It seems inconsistent even within the same game modes. I understand that some game modes have respawn times and some don't, but sometimes it seems to be like five seconds, sometimes it seems to be like two seconds, and I don't know. There's something I'm missing on that one. On another positive point, the loadout system is very Call of Duty. However, it does seem absent any amount of perks, which I do kind of miss. Because of that, and because also there are not that many different weapons in the game yet, we'll get to that, I do feel like there isn't very much variety in the way different people can play the game. It does feel like, for the most part, everybody's using an M4A1 or an AK or an ACR, and they all feel about the same, and everybody's using one of the three SMGs that matter. Everybody's playstyle feels very much the same. It's not like there seems to be very much variety in the way the different guns feel versus one another. Which does come down to a lack of variety in the amount of weapons available to us. Which brings us to the Battle Pass. I am typically a big hater of Battle Passes because it is typically a way for developers to rinse money from people who've already spent £70 on their game. The only time the Battle Passes are okay is in games like X Defiant and Fortnite, where the game itself is free, you didn't pay a penny, you can pe I have not paid a penny to play this game and I've had hours of fun. That is a win. Battle Passes do not belong in games like Call of Duty. Battle Passes do not belong in games that came out on the same time every year for 70 quid. You shouldn't have to pay for a monthly Battle Pass in those situations. You just shouldn't. To be fair, this is something that I miss about all the Call of Duty is that when the Call of Duties used to come out, everything that is going to be available to you at the end of the Call of Duty's lifestyle, life cycle, for the most part is available to you from the beginning so you understand what you're working towards. I remember in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in 2009, I used to be... So I really want, I really loved the AK-47 in that game, but every time I got to level 70 or whatever it was, I was like, nope, I can't keep it because I have to prestige, I must get to 10th prestige, I can treat myself and allow myself to look forward to using this gun once I get to 10th prestige. And it kept me going, there was that sort of reward cycle where I was constantly moving towards the next thing, and I think often in recent Call of Duties, for quite a long time actually, especially once prestiging didn't reset everything anymore, and in X Defiant, where I just don't think there's much that you're working towards, especially if you don't care about the Battle Pass. Or, even if you have the Battle Pass, but especially if you do not care about cosmetics, which I never have. That's just a me problem, it's not an everybody problem, I know, but for the most part, I have never really cared about like the camo that is on my gun or how my character looks. And in, in multiplayer games these days, that is a massive part. It's how billions of pounds have been made by some of these different companies through selling skins for their weapons and trinkets and camos and... Um, skins for the character models and I'm 100% certain that as X Defiant goes on there's going to be more weapons added in there'll be more everything added in probably that Ubisoft could draw from some other franchises to create new character factions I'm sure. So to summarize I think that it does everything that it set out to do it feels like an older Call of Duty it feels like more casual multiplayer fun that you can just jump into and enjoy without having to absolutely sweat like for the first time in a long time I'm able to play the game while watching a YouTube video in the background and not have to like sit down pay attention and focus and listen for footsteps and not move for fear of dying because you know there's somebody that's going to slide cancel around a corner do a 360 backflip and just end your life do think it's going to be one of those that eventually does fizzle out a little bit sooner than I think it wants to just because I'm not sure there's that much in the game that's going to keep people playing, especially when the... F like, who... How many people really are that bothered about the things that you get from the Battle Pass, which is the incentive to keep playing every day in the first place? Again, that could just be me, because I'm getting old and I'm not that bothered anymore about hitting that max level and continually grinding on these multiplayer games. It's just not for me anymore, and I recognise that's a me problem and not everybody else's problem. There are people who probably solely play multiplayer games that probably want to sweat this game forever. It's fun, it's fast paced, it feels pretty polished. The only complaint that I have with the gunplay is that sometimes damage seems rather inconsistent, like there seems to be extreme drop off with bullet damage over certain distances and the, the margins at which the bullets deal, the maximum damage and the minimum damage feel very, very small and sometimes it's like you're doing no damage whatsoever but you step forward like a foot and all of a sudden you are. But aside from that and it could just be due to maybe lag or something like that that occasionally happens, everything feels good. I think if your biggest complaint about a game is that you just wish there was more of it, that is a pretty good complaint to have because that, that just, well it's a good complaint to have. Especially in an era where games are typically just trying to throw everything at you to keep you around forever. But yeah, this has been my first game review of this sort of style where I'm green screened over the footage. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to do this sort of style of video for single player games that I play as well that would probably be a lot longer than this one. Let me know what you think. I'll see you later. Bye bye.